Colleagues, friends, on this International Day for People of African Descent, we reflect on the ongoing legacy of centuries of enslavement of Africans and of colonial oppression, of how this really, this is experienced in the racism and racial discrimination that scar the lives of so many today. We are also reminded of the incredibly rich cultural heritage of people of African descent, a heritage, a heritage that has enriched us all, shaping our societies and our collective history, profoundly contributing to our arts, our music, our scientific knowledge, and so much more. Today, we celebrate these contributions of people of African descent around the globe, and we recognize the extraordinary efforts of so many who are dedicated to building a better future for their communities, anchored in full respect for their human rights. My office and I as High Commissioner are committed to supporting people of African descent and everyone who stands up against racism. As the International Decade for People of African Descent draws to a close, we must reflect on the progress made and the challenges that persist. A number of states have for the first time taken legislative policy or other measures addressing specifically issues faced by people of African descent. At the global level, the Permanent Forum on People of African Descent is rapidly becoming a driving force for the consolidation of an international agenda for and led by communities of African descent. And yet, much more needs to be done to ensure recognition, justice, and development. As the lingering effects of historical injustices continue to obstruct the path to freedom, equality, and dignity for people of African descent, we need to build on the momentum from the last 10 years through proclaiming a second international decade, a decade that must be truly inclusive and transformative, meeting the expectations and needs of people of African descent and ensuring their rights are fully realized. This means broadening our efforts to recognize explicitly systemic racism. It also means redoubling efforts towards reparatory justice, an area where we need to see much greater leadership from states. Reparatory justice is absolutely critical to righting the appalling wrongs of the past. It can play a transformative role in reversing the consequences of generations of exclusion and discrimination. Development, too, must be high on the agenda, redefined so that we recapture its true essence through ensuring racial equality is fully integrated as a core principle of global sustainable development frameworks, including the 2030 Agenda and climate and biodiversity instruments. This means that the voices and perspectives of people of African descent, voices that for far too long have been pushed to the margins, are meaningfully included in all discussions. It also means recognizing the potential that lies in the rich ancestral knowledge of Africans and people of African descent to help us navigate our many global challenges. The Summit of the Future next month, with its focus on revitalizing global governance for the world ahead, stands out as a key moment for ensuring that the perspectives and insights of people of African descent are not only fully welcomed, but also acted upon. Similarly, at COP16 on biodiversity, indeed on every issue, the lived experiences, the wisdom, knowledge, and leadership of communities of African descent must be front and center as we work together to build the future for our human family in pursuit of a common goal, a world more equal, peaceful, and just.